Hallelujah. Well, this is Evangelist Charles Kruger, and we are live with a prophetic teaching tonight. Hallelujah. From the presence of the Lord, from the secret place of the Most High. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. Hallelujah. Lord, we just come just as we are. Just like we are into the throne room of grace, where we can obtain mercy and grace for the times of trouble, even as the generation, our generation is just under a yoke of a coronavirus. Father, we come and we ask you for grace for the times of trouble in the name of Jesus, Lord. As we sit around your word, as we're going to take communion, and Lord, as we are going to just drink hot chocolate and read the word and anoint each other, Lord, and just pray for one another. Lord, we invite the Holy Spirit, that sweet presence of the Holy Spirit, that sweet anointing, that most precious anointing, we invite, Lord, into our time here of fellowship as we sit around the Word in Jesus' mighty name. Well, welcome. If you've just joined in, we are... The Lord started talking to me about being caught up in the Spirit. Um, a lot of people have been asking me about being caught up in the Spirit and what's the story. So we'll hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. It's going to be a prophetic teaching, so it's not prepared or anything like that. I'm just going to go and we're just going to flow in the Spirit. Bless you, PJ. Hallelujah. Let's do this. Amen. Eloise, bless you. Fire of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Tish, bless you. Hallelujah. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to get in the river. Just jump in the river. Just get in the river of God. I've got the anointing oil. We're going to have communion today. Hallelujah. Here's some communion elements. Get your communion elements ready. We're going to eat the body and drink the blood of the Lord Jesus. I just, Father, I just plead the blood of Jesus over this broadcast, over the words that's going to be shared here today. I plead and sprinkle the blood of the Lamb of God over everybody listening. Thank you, Father, for your mercy. Come against every attack of the enemy, every plan of the devil, everything, every plan. Bring it into exposure. Just expose Satan in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, fire. The fire of God's love in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We cancel every voice of deception, every evil spirit, every demonic spirit, every demon, every devil in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Lord, that this word is precious and it's a now word. It's a word for a time such as this. And nothing will stop it. Nothing will hinder it. Nobody will be distracted. Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, that all people's emotions calm down right now. All the emotional turmoil, all the baggage, all the issues, all the troubles, all our burdens we cast unto Jesus in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for that freedom, for that joy, for the victory. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome. Let me know where you are watching from. Praise the Lord. I've got my oval team slash hot chocolate yeah <laughs> praise the lord hipsy bar bless you hallelujah bridget bless you holy ghost fire amen let's just pray in tongues for five minutes cabrebo bosanto labanga dengue zita labasha talabando just wherever you are, just get in tongues. Just pray out loud in tongues. If you can't pray in tongues, then just wait and surrender to the Lord and ask Him. He will not deny you. If we then, being capable of doing evil, know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more does our Heavenly Father not know how to give us the Holy Spirit of promise for those who ask Him? So just ask Him and get in. It's not uh, The Holy Spirit won't open your mouth for you. You surrender your members as a living sacrifice. So you surrender your mouth and your voice and you. Paul says, I will pray in the spirit and I will pray in the understanding. I will sing in the spirit and I will sing in the understanding. So you do it by, by surrendering. The Holy Spirit will not possess you and open your mouth for you. Demons possess people. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. And we're going to talk about getting caught up in the spirit and what it means to be caught up in the spirit and be under the influence of the spirit in a very real way. 
I'm talking about physical experiences with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So let's just pray in tongues for five minutes. Andrea, bless you. Marina, bless you. Labre do bo sakate. Zedro do zotolo bongo do shkadari. Saldo nondo le braba shada da 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 redegete le redi vede be redi vedo rubu shada bando. Le zande nente te ke te redi veko patari ando loro. Alolo rubuto la babra, franina ni antere le tira, sadari gizadri ala shatra, sotro lo sobro, shabri bali virieto lama. Grebe e bendi indukudn, argal halga daskadei, soskadi di di eshtara la yatro lomo, frujala, vreshi virise, hezandes neski skigiriete le entro, prusprabri vredi bebrikite prepanton, ontor toldos tridish, raspal bendo bambro, Bro, mo robo bo 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 she kada bagada galabando. Yes, Lord, jere bere de beke. Hallelujah, I've got some anointing oil here. I want to anoint you guys. Zeba raba zata labato. This is going to be an anointed broadcast. Salaba jete de bebe do bo robosa. Thank you, Lord. Let me get some more oil there. Hallelujah. I'm just going to anoint the screen, the lens here. Just right now, wherever you're watching from. Get ready to receive an anointing and an impartation of the Holy Spirit. A transfer of the anointing is about to take place right from here where I am, right through my hand by the Holy Spirit, right into you. Wherever you are, wherever you are watching, if you've got your phone in your hands, here it comes. In the name of Jesus, Valde Disodoro, Mondolo Shakata, Lord, we anoint this lens with the oil, the anointing oil. Many men of God has prayed over this oil, but it's the anointing of the Holy Spirit that destroys the yoke and sets the captives free in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So let's get into the prophetic teaching today. But before we do that, we've got to... Whoop. <laughs> but before we do that, we've got to read the word. So if you've got your Bible with you, we're going to practice the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I've got a word for you today about getting caught up in the spirit what does it mean to be in the spirit you know they we will be caught up in the air we'll be caught up in the air but there is a certain being caught up in throughout the whole bible where you read people being caught up in the spirit they were caught up they were catched up in the spirit and there is a catching up that is actually people are waiting to be caught up one day in the sweet by and by but what about being caught up today in the, in the air of who he is, in the cloud of glory, in the atmosphere, in the environment? That's the air. So what we're going to read now is Revelation. This is what the Lord said to me to read. Because John was in the spirit in the Lord's day. And he was caught up in the spirit and he saw a revelation of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. We're going to have a revelation of Jesus Christ. In fact, every day is a revelation of Jesus Christ day. Amen. So praise the Lord. Thank you guys for tuning. Those of you that don't know me, I am evangelist or I'm a prophetic evangelist. And the Lord's been using me in hold down gospel campaigns, preaching the gospel and just spreading the love of Jesus. God gave me a revelation personally that changed my life about the love of God, how much the Father loves Jesus and how much the the lifeblood of jesus is worth it bankrupted heaven to save our souls and that love is the same love with which the father loves us because he gave jesus as our substitute he loves you just as much as he loves jesus the word of the lord says in john says with the same love that the father has loved me i love you i have loved you so God loves you with that same love. And we have got to love one another just as we love Jesus. Hallelujah. And that changed my life. And so now we're in lockdown here in South Africa at the time of the recording. And we're getting into the spirit and we're doing these live broadcasts. But I can hardly wait to get out there and start evangelizing and telling people that um, Jesus saves. And he, there is forgiveness of sins. There is mercy in the blood of the Lord Jesus. And not only that, that he can save sinners, but he revives the church and he wants to use the body. He wants to use you and me to go in and change the world and carry an atmosphere of the glory of God. So the Lord said, Revelation 1, 
and this is a prophetic teaching so I have not prepared anything and I never prepare I just prepare myself <laughs> the Lord prepares me anyway so let's read if you've got your Bible get your Bible together the the purpose of these broadcasts is to practice the presence together hallelujah so revelation I've got the passion translation here and we've got the revelation chapter 1 and we're going to read the whole chapter thank you Holy Spirit this is the unveiling of Jesus Christ which God gave him to share with his loving servants sure what must occur swiftly he clearly made it known by sending his angel to his loving servant John I John bore witness to the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ a joyous blessing rests upon the one who reads this message and upon those who hear and embrace the words of this prophecy for the appointed time is in your hands sure glory from John to the seven churches in western Turkey may the kindness of God's grace this is verse 4 may the kindness of God's grace and peace overflow to you from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are in front of his throne and from the and from Jesus Christ the faithful witness so he's the witness hallelujah one of the witnesses the firstborn from among the dead shadow gubarake setelebendo and the ruling king the ruling king who rules over the kings of the earth who rules over the kings of the earth wow that's awesome now to the one who constantly loves us and has loosened us from our sins by his own blood and to the one who has made us to rule as kingly priesthood to serve his God and Father to him be glory and dominion throughout the eternity of eternities amen so being caught up in the spirit the Lord is starting to speak to me it's got everything to do with eternity the spirit is eternal hallelujah verse 7 behold he appears within the clouds the clouds oh he appears within the clouds and every eye will see him even those who pierced him and all the people groups of the earth will weep with sorrow because of him and so it is to be amen now here he talks he says i am the alpha and the Tav says the Lord God now I don't know what's Tav the Omega probably the last letter of the alphabet in the Hebrew says the Lord God who is who was and who is to come the Almighty now it's going to get interesting oh ho, ho. praise the Lord verse 9 I John am your brother and companion in tribulation the kingdom and the patience that are found in Jesus. So he's, the, he's your companion in tribulation and the kingdom. So the kingdom is here. I was exi exiled on the Isle of Patmos because of the ministry of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. So he preached and he bore witness of Jesus and they exiled him in the natural. So he was exiled. So he was basically caught down. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that you can be caught up or you can be caught down. But he was caught down. He was exiled because of his word. The word that he preached. I was in the spirit realm on the Lord's day. So there was the natural. He was caught down in the natural. But on the Lord's day, he was in the spirit realm. I was in the spirit realm on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a loud voice sounding like a trumpet saying to me <laughs> write in a book what you see and send it to the seven churches to Ephesus Smyrna Pergion Thyatira Sardis Philadelphia and Laodicea Laodicea when I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me I saw seven golden lampstands and the 
And walking among the lampstands, I saw someone like a son of man, wearing a full-length robe with a golden sash over his chest. The book of Daniel talks of him seeing a man clothed with linen, all right? And he saw him going, he was, he was on his way somewhere. The seven golden lampstands is in the inner court, in the tabernacle of Moses. Okay, the, there, there is the inner court. And this is Jesus now on his way to the mercy seat. This is what John saw in the spirit. Here is the Lamb of God, and he's on his way to the mercy seat to offer his blood. And he's in the Spirit. He sees the real place in the Spirit. His head and his hair were like wool, white like wool, white as glistening snow. And his eyes were like flames of fire. His feet were gleaming like bright metal, as though they were glowing in a fire. And his voice was like the roar of many rushing waters. The noise of your water spouts. Hallelujah. In his right hand he held seven stars and out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword. And his face was shining like the brightness of the blinding sun. This is something to do with, look, look what happened on the road to Damascus with Paul. Knocked off his horse, saw a light. Like the blinding sun. And he looked and he saw Jesus and Jesus spoke and he said, Why are you persecuting me, Saul? And this is now John being caught up in the spirit. He says, I was in the spirit realm. It's spirit realm. It's not soul realm. It's spirit realm. When I saw him, I fell down at his feet as good as dead. That's the flesh. The flesh fell dead. But he laid his right hand on me and I heard his resurrecting or reassuring voice saying don't yield to fear maybe you feel like you are fainting and you're going down as, as a dead man but he says to you today don't yield to fear I am the beginning and I am the end the living one I was dead but now look I am alive forever and ever and I hold the keys that unlock death and the unseen world he, he holds the keys that unlock death and the unseen world. He can open it up for you. Now I want you to write what you have seen, what is and what will be after the things that I reveal to you. The mystery of the lampstands and the seven stars is this. The seven lampstands are the seven churches. Oh, shit, tabaku. Hallelujah. And the seven stars in my right hand are the seven messengers of the seven churches. And then he goes on to talk to the seven churches and he writes the, the letters. Praise the Lord. So there is an exile in the natural and there is a, there's a being caught up. Come up here. Jesus holds the keys to the unseen realm. And he can reveal him. But the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus. The Holy Spirit is here to teach us, to lead us, to show us. To be in the Spirit is the opposite of being in the flesh. The flesh and the Spirit are at war with one another. The flesh is not the Spirit and the Spirit is not the flesh. Unfortunately, the soul realm has still got to deal with certain fallen emotions and fallen creation emotions. And intellect, reasoning, uh, knowledge, carnal knowledge, this, this world, the senses, the sense realm. And we desire and the soul desires to see things in the sense realm. All right. There is a sense realm, there is a physical realm and there is the spiritual realm. But the spiritual realm longs to be manifested in the physical world. The physical the spiritual wants to manifest here and now. It wants to manifest the word in flesh form. 
let your kingdom come let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven so in heaven it's already done in the spirit realm everything is finished jesus is seated on the throne at the right hand of the father we seated in him positionally in christ jesus and we rule and reign in this world with christ jesus in him we already have the victory it is here on earth that we now need to see the manifestation or the fulfillment of what is already accomplished in heaven the book of revelation is complete in heaven because when we talk of heaven we talk of eternity we talk of the eternal we talk of in god there's no time limits there there are seasons and things but the seasons are for the earth the realm of the spirit is the sower will overtake the reaper the realm of the spirit is he finished the work the end from the beginning and he calls those things which are not as though they are and so here sits jesus finished his blood is accepted in the mercy seat and he sits at the right hand of the father and seated he is declaring that the work is finished that it's done now it's a question of giving birth so deep calls to deep so the heavens are calling out to be manifested on the earth god is looking for somebody who can be a gateway who can open up so that the king of glory can come in god is looking for somebody and at the same time we even creation is groaning it's longing for the manifestation of the sons of god hallelujah so we've got deep calling to deep but but there is a groaning of creation as well that's getting involved in this intercessory longings this birth pangs this this groaning of the spirit basically he helps our infirm our infirmities with groanings so to help with groanings means that we already have some groanings so he comes and he helps our infirmities with groanings which cannot be uttered or communicated in a way that can be understood so here is the spirit of god he is looking for someone who can be caught up in the spirit set your affection on things above not on things on the earth look away from distraction by looking unto jesus so looking has got a lot to do with in the spirit looking can you see in the spirit the carnal man cannot discern the things of the spirit the prophetic talks of insight and revelation and wisdom without vision the people perish being caught up in the spirit got everything to do with seeing with looking with beholding with hearing so he was in the spirit and he saw and he was in the spirit and he heard very seldom do you see someone in the spirit feeling i was in the spirit and i felt i was in the spirit and i tasted i was in the spirit and i smelled no it's got everything to do with seeing and hearing seeing and hearing revelation spiritual things that needs to be manifested in the natural physical carnal world and so we are now born again as believers we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and as we are seated in heavenly places we desire to see our present reality our positional truth as sons and daughters of God in perfection in Christ to walk it out on the earth and to see the miracle signs and the wonders to see the kingdom demonstrated to see those things so the spirit it's not just a nice idea or some dream to be in the spirit is is there is a substance to the spirit i'm talking about a physical tangible substance that is more real than you realize it is holding the molecular structure of this physical realm and universe in tact in him we live and move and have our being the substance of the spirit the worlds were framed by faith and there is there's a language of faith that the world and this physical realm and material and atoms and neutrons electrons all these things it responds to those frequencies of faith or 
I don't want to say frequencies because people's got all kinds of new age ideas and stuff. But there is a substance and I'm not just talking about an energy. There's an actual substance of the spirit, a tangible, experiential substance of the presence of God, the manifest presence. God longs to manifest his glory. He longs to manifest his presence, but he's looking for someone who he can manifest it through. Somewhere where earth can touch heaven and that is to be caught up. So Jesus is coming. There's the second coming of Jesus. All right. He wants to appear in all flesh. He wants to appear in the flesh, but he wants to appear in the flesh of the body in the form of the manifestation of the sons of God. Okay, the word wants to be made flesh. So Jesus is coming and we will meet him in the air. So we'll be caught up and we will meet him in the air as he's coming. So he is coming, he's on his way and there is a caught up. So, so God is looking for a portal. When he comes, we will already be like him. He is coming and he's looking for a, a gateway. Faith. He's looking for faith. If the Son of Man comes, will he find faith in the earth? God is looking for his eyes running to and through throughout the whole world, looking for somebody who looks and who sees him. If you can see me going up, you will have my mantle, Elisha. Can you see in the spirit? If you can see it, you can have it. If you can see it, you can have it. That's a principle of the spirit. Can you see Jesus? Every eye will see him. You just read it in Revelation. Every eye will see him and we will look and we will see. All right. When that which is seen in the spirit and heard in the spirit becomes manifested, then John says, or one John says, whom our whom we have beheld, whom our eyes has looked upon, whom we have handled. So when the unseen becomes seen, then the manifestation takes place where you can touch. Now you can touch the things of the spirit. Now it's manifested in flesh form. All right. There is a tangibility. Now we've also got to remember that Jesus in his resurrected body is a physical body. His resurrected body is tangible. He said, put your finger in my nail prints, put your thrust, your hand in my side. And they touched him and they beheld him and they touched him and, and handled him. And then he walked. Now Jesus has got a physical body, right? A resurrected body, a, a glorified body. Let me put it that way. And with that glorified tangible, he's not in the spirit in heaven. He is the mediator. He is the connection. He's the way. He's the doorway between the spirit realm, heaven and earth. No man comes to the Father except through me. Jesus goes in physically. I mean, with his physical body, he walks into the cloud. And the clouds received him. He walks into, he, he is ascended into the heavens. Right? He is ascended. That's the ascended life. That's the above life. That's to be born from above. You know that in the word of God, there's not a lot of terms um, used to describe the born again experience. Jesus said you must be born again. But the actual biblical term when you and, and what it's talking about is to be born from above. When you are born again, it means to be born from above. It doesn't help you born again from natural. You've got to be born again from the above. So as many as believed in him to, gave, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. <clears throat> as many as are led by the spirit, they are the sons of God. <laughs> when, you, when you are born from above, you are a son. You're a manifested son. But there are things in the spirit that is positionally true. That needs to manifest. So Jesus wants to return. He's longing for the bride. He wants to return. And the spirit and the bride says, come Lord Jesus, come quickly. There is a calling, a deep calling unto deep. The spirit is saying, come. The Lord Jesus is longing. He wants to return to his bride. Okay. The physical 
that is locked up in the heavens wants to be manifested again. Jesus is he's caught up in the spirit. He, he walked with his physical body. Paul said he didn't know whether he was in the body or out of the body. When he was in the spirit, he went into the third heaven. He saw things that was unlawful for people to talk about. All right. He saw things in the spirit. He saw and heard things that he cannot utter here. But there's a longing for the things of the spirit to be uttered here. Jesus said, if I talk of heavenly things, or if I talk of earthly things and you do not understand me, how will you understand if I talk of heavenly things? So the Holy Spirit is here now. He's our teacher and our helper to teach us what things were freely received of the Father. And the Holy Spirit will teach us what Jesus has taught or is releasing to us. He says, what I have re received from my Father and what the Holy Spirit receives of me, He will teach you. So the Holy Spirit is the link. To be in the Spirit is to have contact with heaven. And I'm not sure how this is going to play out. But if Paul didn't even know, it was so real that he didn't know whether he was in the body or out of the body. Because he didn't understand it. Right? He didn't know, but for him it felt he was in the body, he was in the flesh. He couldn't understand, why can I be in heaven with my body? Just like Jesus was in heaven in the spirit realm, but with a physical body. So the new heaven and the new earth, there is a, a correspondence or an agreement and an aligning of heaven and earth. There's a point of contact. This is what the Lord is looking for. He's looking for people and his saints. And the only way that he can find a foothold in this world is for people to surrender to the spirit, to be led by the spirit, not to be carnal, but for a place of the spirit to find rest, a place of the spirit to find a place where he can abide, a place where he can rest and linger and hover upon somebody. The thing that I'm talking about tonight is deep stuff and it's radical stuff, but it's got everything to do with those who are manifested as sons of God. I'm throwing a lot of stuff out there and the Lord will draw it together. It's a prophetic teaching. This will get many, many people thinking and chewing but let's go deeper so jesus wants to manifest in the flesh and he's on his way he is returning there is a return of the lord jesus but those who can be caught up and meet him in the air will receive him he's not receiving us we're not going he's he's coming he said he will come it's the second coming of jesus it's not the second going of Jesus and his body. No, it's the second coming. So we're waiting for him to come. We're not waiting to go. You know, we'll meet him because if we were going, he would meet us in the air. But we would we're meeting him in the air. That means he's coming. Okay. So there is the manifestation of heaven wants to take them. He says, I do not pray that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them in the world. You are in the world, you're not from the world. We are the foothold <clears throat> with the, the grasping place of heaven on the face of the earth, the body of Christ. This is his kingdom. This is the place where he can rule and reign rightfully upon the face of the earth. And he wants a manifestation. The glory and the Shekinah glory of God desires and longs to be manifest. Just like you and I long to be caught up in the spirit and to be in the cloud. There's a longing deep calls to deep. But the glory is coming, right? The, the glory wants to manifest. There's a cloud of glory. Ezekiel saw it. He said the glory. I saw the glory and it was clouds and there was colors of the rainbow. And there was a circle and a wheel within a wheel. And I saw the living creatures and the elders. He saw the heavens, the, the 24, that's the prophets, the 12 and, and the, the apostles, all right? or the 12 tribes, I don't know. There's the, there's the 24 elders, I think that's the prophets and the apostles of the new Jerusalem, that's the elders, the 12 apostles and the 12, there's 12 prophets, 
of pillars or whatever. Anyway, so here we have a church that's longing for him and his glory wants to manifest. But there is a certain atmosphere of heaven. There is a certain environment of the presence. It's the air of the presence to be caught up. And I believe we're going to fly. Fine. I'm all for that. I want to fly as well. Because if Jesus walked on water, then I can walk on clouds. Amen. Fine. I've got no problem with that. But we'll meet him in the air has got a lot of connotation of being caught up in the spirit. Caught up in the cloud. Just like Jesus was caught up in the cloud. Caught up. Is it just for one day in the sweet by and by? Or is it that we can teach it and there is a revelation that the church has missed. That we can get caught up in the cloud. That we can go into the secret place and abide in a place that is more real than what we know to be reality on this earth. A place that is more real than fallen creation. A place that when you go there you are more aware of it. That you are more consciously aware of that place. But it's not a place of the mind and of the soul. Meditation is wonderful. I'm not talking about astral projection and transcendental meditation and I don't know what you want to call it. Astral, all, all that kind of stuff. Okay? But there are things called trances in the spirit. Now, my experiences and my encounters with the Lord was real. I mean, I, I saw physically, but there's a lot of times that I go in the spirit. And what I've learned that when you're caught up in the Spirit and you are surrounded by the Spirit of God <clears throat> and you are in the cloud and the atmosphere of the Spirit, you can see things, you can perceive things, but the moment the vision or the dream ends, there's total clarity. And you sometimes you'll be awake uh, or asleep and suddenly after a vision or a dream from God, you'll be wide awake. Suddenly you'll get up and you'll be wide awake. And that's how you know that God has talked to you. You wake up immediately. It's like you are awake when the vision is finished. And then the other thing that I've noticed, I can only vouch for me, but this is the truth. When, when the spirit realm is manifested, the spirit realm, when you are caught up in the spirit, there is a physical presence or a, a tangible, noticeable presence of Jesus. In the room or in the atmosphere. There is comfort. There is peace. There is joy. There is kindness. All is well. He is on the throne. There is a safety there. There is a holiness. There is a comfort and a sweetness. And a familiar presence. Almost like a recognition or an acknowledgement of his presence in the room. Whereas as when, when you are getting a nightmare or some kind of a soul dream or some kind of a soulish vision or premonition or your subconscious mind remember you have a subconscious mind and years ago there was this movie released the secret <clears throat> but it's absolutely buddhistic it's not godly and they said the secret this is the secret and they talk about what you can do to to pull or to draw success and money and wealth and happiness and stuff to you and so you've got to you've got to meditate it so you get your you in the soul realm and then what they used to say is benjamin franklin you know a lot of these guys were caught up in freemasonry and stuff those days they would take an iron ball and people do practice this still today take an iron ball and they put it in their hands and they sit on a chair Right, they sit on a chair and they got the ball in their hands, and this is late at night, just before you fall asleep. This is the wrong stuff to do. This is so just before you fall asleep, the ball falls out of your hands and hits the ground, and you wake up. You know, you know, when you wake up, that's where a lot of these scientists and inventors and people in the world that soul men they get all their revelations or their inventions and good ideas and stuff from that place because that place it's just when your conscience 
consciousness slips into your subconsciousness. That's where there's an, a moment just before you fall into sleep. There's a moment where there's a communication between your subconscious and your mind and your consciousness. Now remember the subconsciousness is not the spirit. The subconscious is where the spirit and the soul come together and that's where the influence of the spirit talks to your soul or communicates. That's the place. The more you are edified in the spirit and sowing to the spirit, the more you walk in miracles, but the more edification you give and sow to the spirit, the more edified you'll be and the spirit man will gain ascendancy or the spirit man will will take the lead a carnal man his flesh is leading him or his emotions and they walk by feelings not by faith they walk by sight not by faith but we walk by faith so the things i'm talking about is spirit it's got everything to do with your heart your mind has got to come in line with the spirit your spirit doesn't have to come in line with your mind and that's what the people try to do with these middle eastern meditations and yoga and kung fu and who knows what they're busy doing they got all kinds of torture uh, things that they torture themselves with to get their spirit to do what their mind wants to do okay <clears throat> so when you approach the spirit from the place of the mind you open up yourself to a lot of demonic activity and evil spirits and things that can possession climb into you suddenly you'll feel like you've got a wrong attitude you can hardly recognize yourself anymore the way you're talking to people and you're thinking man but i was never like this i'm never i, I never had an anger problem i never had a, a depression problem I never, it's a spirit that you open up yourself to many people especially when you watch horror movies and occultic movies and satanic demon you know demonic movies and things be careful what you watch be careful what you look at you open up yourself because when you look at something you open up your gates to that it's an entry point why do you think there's so many horror movies and thrillers and murdering and what killing stealing destruction satanic things on television because people are addicted to it it's the it's that soul that is lusting it's the it's the lust of the eyes and people the the world the devil is pushing that stuff so that people can ma ba basically meditate on it and then when you have watched these movies and you've opened up yourself to all the propaganda of satan and watch the news and all that lies and stuff what happens just before you fall asleep you're still meditating you're still thinking in the soul realm you're still thinking of carnal things of the situation in the world of death and destruction and murder and horror and these things these these droch builder these horror images is flashing through your mind that's in your soul realm but there just before you fall asleep the soul the information in the soul realm is carried in to the subconscious but also at the same time the spirit the information from the spirit is also carried in to the subconscious mind the subconscious is where the spirit and the soul meet that's the meeting place it's not one or the other it's a mix it's an agreement between the two it's the influence of the soul on the spirit and thus influence of the spirit on the soul okay so this is where the difference comes when you go into evil and i don't have i didn't study this stuff this is a prophetic teaching by the spirit of the lord so when you go into meditation and transcendental i don't even know what how to how to say it, transcendental and astral or astro projection or whatever people sit and meditate and they think how the roses smell and how they feel the grass between their toes and are they looking and they feel and they they are meditating and trying to get their soul to go into a, another dimension into the subconscious they think it's a, it's a spirit they go into the subconscious 
and then they open up their subconscious for demonic influence instead of being open to the spirit of God they're not caught up in the spirit of God they caught down they are in exile <laughs> they are in bondage they are opening up themselves into a realm for demonic possession and oppression and influence of of demons that's how demons go in they also need a gate to go in they don't just jump on people they need a gate <clears throat> whereas if you have been sowing to the spirit if you've been praying in tongues a lot tongues is a revelational gift now tongues builds up your spirit and the more your spirit is spirit man is born again i'm talking about born again believers the more you pray in tongues and surrender your mouth and your tongue and your voice the more you surrender your voice and your mouth and your tongues the more you learn and you familiarize yourself with surrendering because if you surrender your tongue if you can tame the tongue you're a perfect man according to proverbs he who can tame his tongue is a perfect man they've tamed lions and wild beasts and they've tamed everything but they've never tamed the tongue here comes the holy spirit with an endowment of power from an eye why is it important to pray in tongues when you baptize with the holy spirit it's not only an evidence it is the holy spirit that comes and he tames the tongue it's important to pray in tongues there's purpose to it when you pray in tongues you tame the tongue the holy spirit is taming your tongue you surrendering your tongue for the spirit because life and death is in the power of the tongue if god could have any foothold in you and in humanity the one foothold that he chose was the tongue if he could just have your tongue then he could change everything and so this is what happened at the day of pentecost he has your tongue Give it to him. The more you pray in tongues, you more familiarize yourself with surrendering to the Holy Spirit. And now the word of God separates between soul and spirit, rightly dividing. Because any other person that wants to divide between your soul and spirit has no idea. But the word comes and pierces and it's a two-edged two sword. And it rightly divides between soul and spirit and joint marrow. Hallelujah. And the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And the Holy Spirit comes and he now, as, this, as the word pierces and separates, the Holy Spirit comes and he, as you edify, and he helps you and he tames the tongue. Now you learn to differentiate between your thoughts and your mind and emotions and feelings and panic and the part of you that can be distracted that needs to be renewed by the washing of the water of the word and then you discern between that because a carnal man cannot discern the things of the spirit that means a spiritual man can discern because he says pray that you have the spirit of wisdom and the revelation so that the eyes of your understanding might be enlightened so that you will know what is the difference and to know the love of god and to know the height and the length and the breadth and the width hallelujah so so the thoughts of the spirit and the thoughts of the mind is two different things but god wants them to become one not compromising the thoughts of the spirit to somehow compromise and become conformed to the thoughts of emotions and fallen creation no the spirit must take the lead but when you have edified yourself to that point where you have prayed in tongues where you have read the word where you have confessed where you've prayed you've had the fellowship of the believers you're sowing you're fasting you're worshiping God, you're sowing to the Spirit. You're thinking God's thoughts. You look away from distractions. There comes a place where you learn and it's more easy for you to surrender to the Spirit. And to be caught up in the Spirit has got everything to do with your willingness to surrender. He's not just going to take you. He, he's waiting for you to surrender and give Him consent. Being caught up in the Spirit has got everything to do with your willing consent. Not your mind's consent, your heart's consent. Your heart. God is a gentleman. He is he, not going to force and 
He's not like that. He, he waits for you to surrender. The more you pray in tongues, the more you learn how to surrender quicker to the realm of the Spirit. The more the Spirit man gains ascendancy, the more influence the Spirit has on the soul and not the soul on the Spirit. Okay, so when you're born again, your spirit man is recreated. But you can edify your spirit man. Because there's still things like filthiness of spirit. Why do you think millions and millions of Christians are born again? They saved, they washed in the blood of Jesus, but they do not pray in tongues. It's filthiness of doctrine. Filthiness of spirit. They need to receive revelation. Millions of Christians do not believe in healing. That healing is for today. That Jesus is the healer. Today. The same. Yesterday, today and forever. Many do not believe that God wants you to prosper. And that God has made prosperity and success and blessings available. The blessing in you will all nations be blessed. There's provision for you. But so, so, so there is a a very real uh, just pray in tongues redo sekaraba lebedingo duskadaro bushitarabatu there's a real potential for your spirit man <laughs> yes I'm getting a lot of resistance Jesus help shadagando maybe this is a very important word Holy Spirit there's the potential of Oh man, it's out. Shata kaba kote sodolo robo shekete nento. Holy Spirit help sheda bato sedo dongo zika tara bando. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. <sighs> Just pray in tongues right now. Sheda bado. Kele bendo do. Thank you, Jesus. Something's nervous. I've just stepped on something's toes. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna they're about to lose their head <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank you jesus sadra bako all right so here we go the holy spirit builds you up and there you are your your spirit man has gained ascendancy and it starts overflowing into your soul realm there's a very real potential as a born-again believer that wrong doctrines and vain imaginations and high things that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God can come in and corrupt good conversation. Evil communication, it corrupts. There is a, a corruption that wants to come. He says, a fly in the ointment makes the all stink. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. So you can be born again, but if you are continually watching carnal things, exposing yourself and sowing to the flesh, then that's, that stuff will have an influence on the well-being of your spirit. But you can't spend time in the presence of the Lord, fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, and at the same time be busy with other stuff. You will, you will choose the one or the other. Okay? Eventually, when you continue to pray in tongues and come just as you are, change will become a reality there will be a change in the inward parts but the change is there to edify you or to prepare you to give you the capacity to to sit you in a position where god can manifest in your life that's preparation you are surrendering you are consenting you are giving consent you are yielding you are waiting upon the lord for the holy spirit to find a resting place upon you He's looking for somebody whose spirit has gained ascendancy and whose spirit man, the born again spirit man, who is edified, no filthiness of doctrines, no vain imagination, no old wives fables, no gene genealogies and generational curses and nonsense and dragons and demons. No, none of that. Non no distractions. No voice of the stranger. He's looking for somebody like that whose heart is totally set upon him. And then the spirit man, that edified spirit man starts influencing your emotions and what we call this this is holy emotions this is not meditating and thinking like the sinners meditate this is totally different the two cannot even be compared meditation in god's terms is vastly different than meditation in the world and a person that's not born again cannot meditate like God wants made it and and because Satan perverts and he corrupts, he cannot create, but he perverts. 
So they might chant, and they're sitting there, om and yam and yam and yam, and they're chanting and chanting, and they think they will be heard because of their much speaking. A lot of people in the church is doing that. No, it's not that. It is not from the mind. It's from the spirit. So, so when you sow to the spirit and you go there by choice, but you've got to go willingly. You can't force it or put tension on it. Okay. There comes a consent. As he wins your heart, you will continue to, to show up for prayer. And what happens is the spirit gains ascendancy and starts influencing your soul man. So now what happens is there's a greater influence and area of agreement between the soul and the spirit so your subconscious mind is growing larger basically it's it's there is more influence of the spirit man and now as you think the thoughts of christ purposefully and intentionally just because you want to you start thinking of the word thinking of the scriptures meditating the word of god the mind and the spirit will now meet in the subconscious realm if the spirit has ascendancy then you'll see a vision or you'll dream a dream or god will take you you'll be caught up into the third heaven if there is a surrender of the soul to the leadership of the spirit or a consent it's not a giving up your soul is still in in there but the more influence later on the as the spirit gains ascendancy and is edified and is strengthened the more he will take the lead and your soul will follow and then you will have the will of god and the heart of god and you will know the thoughts of god and you will speak the words of god you will think his thoughts you will walk in his ways the higher ways you'll be born from above it's a caught up ascended life we will be caught up it means to be caught unto a higher not to be to shoot up to the moon that's not what it means to be caught up to be caught up is to be caught up to the spirit when john saw he was on the, on the mountain and he saw the new jerusalem coming down from god it doesn't mean it's going to come out like a spaceship and, and land on the earth. <sighs> okay? It means it's coming down from God. It means it wants to manifest on the earth. And it's already here. It's already manifesting. The kingdom is not here it is or there it is. This is what the word says. The kingdom is within you. Righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The whole earth needs to be, the curse of fallen creation needs to be broken off of this whole earth. Okay, and we are yet to do that. He has put us in the desert, not to run away and leave it like it is, but to subdue the earth and to overcome. To he that overcomes, right? And we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Not that runs away in terror and cowardice, timid, running away from the world and the Antichrist because we want to escape so that Jesus must just help us. So at least, no, 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 no. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are part of the kingdom. You are ruling in this life. And until you take, put up, but I take off your nappies and take up your sonship and maturity, you're not, you understand what I'm saying? You're not going to inherit because a child will not inherit, but the son will inherit. So the manifestation of the sons of God. The world is crying out. The world is waiting in earnest expectation for the manifestation of the sons of God. How are we going to do it on purpose, intentionally, just because we want to? We're going to continue to sow in the spirit and pray in tongues. Because that is where, and you allow, you wait upon the Lord and allow him to win your heart and to awaken love inside of you. Because when he awakens love, when your heart is in it, you give him consent. And when you give God consent, you surrender. You yield. When you yield and you surrender, all right, now the Holy Spirit has permission because He will not come against your will and against your, your you need to give Him permission. That's the God we serve. And you can thank Him that He's like that. Satan's not like that. When you come in from the, the outside where you are not saved and you 
you meditate, 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 and you go into those trans- transcendental, med- all that stuff. Then you go into the subconscious and you are pushing things from the soul realm into the subconscious. But because your spirit is not born again or maybe your, your spirit is weak. There's a lot of Christians that's also doing it this way. But their spirit is weak and cannot resist. And so what happens is there's a gap. There opens up a gap and demonic influence can come into your subconscious level. And that is where they put their hooks in and that's where they dwell. And the subconscious realm is so real. People go and they are hypnotized and they can go back and it's proven, it's fact. They can go back to any day that when they were babies, man, they can even remember when they were babies. That's how real and powerful your subconscious mind is. And people go into the subconscious mind through meditation and all kinds of stuff. Guys, your mind is so powerful. You, you can do funny things with your mind. You can bend spoons. You can levitate. These people that levitating, your mind can take you and place you in another part of the world. That's how these demon, these um, witches and warlocks and stuff, they are doing it. But they're doing it from the mind side and through evil spirits. So the subconscious mind consists not only of soul. It has to have a spiritual influence as well. And if they don't have the Holy Spirit, then they take some other spirit. And then s- terrible things happen. But we have the Holy Spirit, but we are pushing it throughout from the Spirit. Rivers of living water will flow out of your innermost being. So we are not sowing to the mind. We're sowing to the Spirit. You can read the Word, but what you're actually doing is you're not, you're not just memorizing it. You're not just studying it intellectually. The Word is finding entrance. The entrance of your Word gives life. So you're not just... When you read the Bible and you read the Word, you see Jesus. Don't just memorize it. Don't read through the pages of the Bible as fast as you can, just to say that you did it. No. You've got to eat. You've got to fellowship with the Word. That's why people don't like reading the Bible. When when you don't fellowship with the Word, it's just knowledge and the letter kills. But when the word becomes a person and you fellowship with the word and you eat the hours and hours and hours will go by and you will enjoy the word. It will be amazing. You've got to get to fellowship. But when you as a born again believer that's born from above with a capacity of the spirit and the born again human spirit. I'm not even talking about the Holy Spirit only. You are one spirit with but you have a human spirit as well. So you are born again and you have a capacity to perceive and and perceive the the things of the spirit my sheep know my voice and so the, you fellowship with the word and you worship and it's not just lip service it's not chanting it's not chanting all right when you confess that's not chanting that's something different the guys that don't have jesus they chant but we confess you can repeat your confession the lord is my shepherd i shall not want The Lord is my shepherd. I shall. There's nothing wrong with that. Because as you are speaking by the spirit, your mind is listening because your mind needs to be renewed. Right? But make sure because the washing of the water of the word is the water is the spirit. The spirit has got to wash your mind. The word in itself will not do it. The water of the word will do it. So the washing of the water of the word is when you confess and say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Your mind is listening because it's an influence of the spirit that's coming towards your mind instead of the mind trying to influence the spirit. Sure, anyway, okay. So, praise the Lord. Basically, what will, what will happen eventually, and thank you guys for, for still listening. Listen, the revelation is still coming. What will happen is your spirit man will gain ascendancy. And now it will wash your soul. It will anoint your soul. In other words, the influence of your spirit will get to the point over your soul, will get to the point where your soul is under the influence totally 
under, because it surrendered to Jesus. Totally under the influence and the leading of the Spirit. Those who are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. That happens, that is what happens when the manifestation of the sons of God comes. What now happens is your soul, your will is so in line with the will and the heart of God that God starts trusting you. He trusts you because you have been not conformed to the world, but transformed by the renewing of the washing of the world and the spirit of your mind and your mind to be, to be formed, transformed into the image and likeness of the Son of God. That's the manifest presence. That's the manifestation of the sons of God. Okay, so, so a lot of what people are saying is caught up in the spirit is actually just he, heathen, uh, uh, heathen uh, what do you call it? Pagan practices where they are doing, they, they're living life from the soul. This is not what we're talking about. We're talking about the spirit. There's a very fine line. But if you don't have a fellowship and a relationship with the Holy Spirit, you, you, you'll never understand what I'm talking about at all, ever. Because... <laughs> The things of the Spirit has got everything and only to do with fellowship and personal relationship. There's no formulas. There are principles and precepts and line upon line and things like that. But it is by the Spirit, the relationship with God. It's not, it's not a dead chanting formula witchcraft. It's not witchcraft. I'm not talking about witchcraft. I'm talking about a relationship with God. And so this is real. And don't fabricate it. Don't make a pretense of the thing. It's got to be real. It's got to be automatic. It's got to be a heart in love with God. And what happens then is your spirit is so intertwined with your soul. And your soul has been so conformed to the image and likeness of Jesus Christ. That now. Now this is heavy stuff I'm talking about now. Now you can will the spirit into action. Because there's alignment and agreement. It's not double-minded. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Because you've got the mind of the soul and the mind of the heart. The mind of the spirit. Alright? But when those two come together and there's agreement, that's called faith. Doubt is gone. But there's belief. There's trust. When there's trust between you and the Holy Spirit and He trusts you. I'm talking about you. Even your soul. Because your soul is being... Con there comes a point where He will give you a service. Where you have the control over that service. You can mess it. You can stop the service in the middle of an anointed song. You can stop and you can send the people home. While the Holy Spirit is moving. He takes a man and He puts him in charge over the anointing. Can you believe? Can you, can you imagine... The kind of responsibility that you have as a man of God or woman of God. That you come to that place where God will actually trust you. Because the spirit is subject. He was, they come, not, not a carnal Christian. I'm not talking about children here. I'm talking about sons. This is where you are living the ascended life. You are caught up and permanently. Not just visiting. You are in a place. Where you are more aware of God than anything else. Okay, so, so this is a place where He will trust you. And it says the spirit of prophecy is subject to the prophets. Not everybody can prophesy anytime they want to just because they want to. But there comes a point where God starts trusting you. Where you come into a place where the spirit is subject to. The spirit of the prophet is subject to. To the prophet or the, the spirit of prophecy. It's the testimony of Jesus. Who is Jesus? The manifested son of God. The firstborn of many brethren. Goodness. Oh Lord. And there, that place. You show up and you, you don't have to prepare what you're going to say. Or what you're going to preach. Or what you're going to teach. You come to that point where you show up. And that same hour that you need to speak, the Holy Spirit starts speaking to you. 
and the revelation starts falling and the, and the anointing starts brooding and the gift starts stirring and the flame starts flaming. <laughs> there, there's that place and you open up your mouth and he takes over. It was so heavy on Kenneth E. Hagen that Kenneth Hagen said he, he was scared that the Holy Spirit will just take him and he'll lose a week. Because this happened with him. He would get up on stage and stand behind the pulpit to preach. And then he would be out, just caught up in the spirit. He'd be gone. And after two or three hours, he would wake up and get, get to his senses and say, what happened? What happened with the service? You know, um, who preached? Because I was out. I, I can't what happened. They said, no, but you preached. Here's the video. Look at the video. And he was walking on the video and he was preaching things that he's never ever in his life ever heard of. Revelations from the word of God. <clears throat> then he would go to the people in wheelchairs and raise them up from the wheelchairs and bring healing. And the Holy Spirit took him and put him on like a glove. And he said it was so heavy that, but it, it was willing. He was willing. But he said later on, he thought, yes, he Wow, what if God takes me for a whole week? You know, just takes over. Things of the Spirit. Now, now that brings me to my second point. To be caught up in the Spirit. This is a place in eternity. It's out of time. And you've got to understand the revelation of Jesus Christ on the Lord's Day. It is in totality and it is absolutely fulfilled in its totality. There's nothing undone. There's nothing unfulfilled. In the spirit realm, there's nothing he must still do. The cross is complete. The work is finished. God is finished with his work. Jesus is seated. All right? Seated at the right. So there, what now needs to take place is the finished work and the reality. We have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. What now needs to take place is that needs to be manifest. That needs to manifest. So there are things in the book of Revelation. Everything in the book of Revelation is complete in the spirit. It's done. It's in the spirit. It's in the eternity of eternities. He says it there. Eternity of eternities. Alpha and Omega. He is the Alpha and he is the Omega. It is done. It is done in God. What now needs to happen is we've got to play it out. The, the book needs to play out on this earth. Because we do not yet see all his enemies made his footstool. But it is already his footstool in heaven. He doesn't need to conquer death. He's already done it. But now we need to take that victory that we have in Jesus Christ. And we need to conquer death. Yeah, on earth. Because his enemies need to be made his footstool. Why? Because it's already done in the heavens. So the church needs to get caught up in the things of the spirit. Get caught. Be in the spirit on the Lord's day. Like John. See what is yours. But we pray prayers like, please come and heal me. Please bless me. Please help me. Help me. Destroy the coronavirus. Please. And it's already done. It's done. Can we not say, Lord, thank you. <laughs> we make our petitions known with thanksgiving. We are still here. We are still soul, body, flesh, spirit. We are here. There's nothing wrong with asking God. He said, ask of me and I'll give it to you. You have not because you ask not. But ask with thanksgiving, knowing that the cross is complete. Knowing that it is fulfilled, knowing it's got everything to do with the kingdom of God in you. Righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. It is within you that is being caught up in the spirit. So there's more to being caught up in the spirit than just flying away one day at the return of Jesus. And he is coming back. Make no mistake. He's coming back and it might happen quicker than you think. But he's coming for a triumphant church. So... There's no reason why you cannot be caught up and have fellowship with Jesus right now in a spiritual way.
And it can be so real that you can have experiences like Paul that says, I don't know whether I was in the body or out of the body. That's how real. It's real. You can walk in. I've heard of encounters and I have had some experiences that I don't know what to make of. Where you walk into a place, but you, it's, not, it's not in the earth. You're in a, another place. I mean, I'm talking about a room. You are in a, another room and you're not on the earth. You are now in heaven. You are in heavenly places. And you are there, man. But glimpses like this. And I've heard of people. But then there's these guys that go to heaven every day. And they caught up. And basically they're just thinking and meditating. And fine, okay. You are basically guiding this whole daydream that you are sitting. And then you go and you tell the people that God has spoken to you. And you were caught up and you spent an hour in the, in the heaven. But basically you were just sitting there meditating. Which is fine if it comes by the Spirit. But you had a vision. You, don't, you weren't caught up in the spirit I mean caught up I'm not you you weren't translated you were having a, a vision you were thinking you were meditating by the spirit led by the spirit that's also awesome um, so anyway bless you uh, that's enough that's what I want to say tonight and tonight thank you Holy Spirit for your anointing I pray Holy Spirit that you will take us into the place called there and the place called done so that we can enforce the finished work of the cross of Calvary on the earth today. That we can walk in the finished work and we can walk in eternity. Because we'll be right there in, in... Hallelujah. Let's get our communion elements ready. God says, stop. That's enough. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> That's enough for now. There's, there's coming more. But tonight, what a prophetic teaching. I mean, this stuff, most of the stuff that I've spoken tonight was spur of the moment revelation so that's the that's the beauty of of the things of the spirit and the the most precious thing tonight that stood out for me was the fact that there comes a time where your mind is is not conformed to the world but it's conformed to the will of god and you have the mind of christ that's a place where you think god's thoughts and you walk in his ways and you are truly born from above and that's a place where the holy spirit can trust you and he will be subject to you that's sonship sonship you can decide i'm going to walk on water now you can decide i'm going to heal this person in jesus name you can decide but that's a place of maturity guys that's a place of maturity Closeness, fellowship with God. And it's not time. You can get there today. You can get there today. The Holy Spirit will lead you into that. And that's why you are watching this broadcast. God wants to take you there. You. Yeah, but I'm not a preacher. I'm not a, a fivefold. No, it's not for those. It's for you. It's for everyone. The fivefold is there to get everybody up there. That's the gifts of God. It's got nothing to do with us as a body. All right. I'm talking about walking in the fulfillment and the manifestation of our maturity until the fivefold is there, until we all come forth in the image and likeness of God and raised up in the stature, in the fullness of the stature of the Christ. Hallelujah. That's why the body is there, uh, the fivefold is there to edify the body. So it's for you. And this is when you are caught up in the air or the atmosphere, um, the cloud. You in that cloud, right? He says, he will, he, the clouds have received him and the clouds will release him. He will walk out of that cloud, of the air. When you walk into a, a room or a, your work situation or a job or whatever, wherever you are, you are supposed to carry the air of heaven, the atmosphere. Do you realize that Jesus has his own environment? He creates his own environment. He's not subject to the world's environments and atmospheres. You know, sometimes you walk into a house or you're stuck in a house and there's an atmosphere. I mean a bad one. And they, and you, I mean, you walk into that place and it influences you and it affects you and it just knocks you. 
you walk out of there and you feel drained and you feel miserable you feel tired you feel like you have been abused you don't know what's happened it was a spiritual atmosphere and you walked in there and you weren't ready for it. You realize that you are supposed, and I, we're supposed to walk in there like Jesus. When Jesus walks into that, he takes control of the atmosphere. His presence demands, con, con, he dom, has dominion. He rules the atmosphere. He rules that. We are supposed to be, to be caught up in the air, in the atmosphere, and in the environment of heaven. So that it will be a physical manifestation on the earth. Praying. He said. He didn't say seek my face in vain. Praying. And fasting. And waiting on the Lord. And fellowshipping with the Lord. It's not just for goosebumps. And, and butterflies in your stomach. And good feeling. And happy happy. Some people think it's a high. You just get high with Jesus. Man. It's much more than that. It's not just the high. I mean, I'm on a constant high with Jesus. Okay? <laughs> but it's not that there is purpose. There's manifestation. He wants you to walk on water. He wants you to fly on the wings of the wind. Walk in authority. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. That is what he desires. Turn the water into wine. Feed the multitudes with five loaves and two fish. Or with how many fish or loaves you have. To walk in, in, in miracles. Is it a fable? No, it's not. We've, we've lived long enough. We've seen past the revivals. We've seen men of God, women of God in past generations. How they walked in the authority of the Spirit of God. And they cast out demons. I mean, thousands were saved. I mean, the healing awakening in the United States. I mean, what happened in South Africa with John G. Lake. And not only John G. Lake, there's many, many. I mean, all over, man. We've seen, we've got enough testimonies and accounts of where the Lord is taking us. They didn't even scratch the surface. So in Jesus' mighty name, let's take communion. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If you want to sow into this word, into this ministry, into Loveborn, it's paypal.me forward slash Loveborn. Paypal me forward slash Loveborn. And I will be sure to also put the banking details on you. In Jesus' mighty name, bless you. Thank you for everybody that sowed. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I call in your harvest. In Jesus' name, it's fruitful ground. Bless you. Amen. This is the manifestation. You want to know what's caught up in the spirit. Take the substance. This is my body. Not this represents my body. This is my body. This is the substance of Christ himself. This is his body. Whom our hands have handled. The word of life. Eat. Hmm. Lord Jesus, this is your blood that was shed for us. The cross of Calvary. We receive your blood. Your blood speaks for us, Lord. May your blood run through our veins now and cleanse us and purify us. And cover us and protect us against coronavirus, against plagues, sickness and disease. Against people violating our human rights and privileges which you have set in place. Protect us against evil men that wants to rule your church we overcome by the blood of the lamb in jesus name we cover every person right now partaking with us in the blood of jesus so that the lord will lead you into the things that i've been talking about it's not going to be strange it's not going to be unfamiliar you know it's not going to be it's going to be the unknown made known it's going to be the journey of uh, eternity there's always deeper, there's always more, there's always greater. There's a time that's coming now that we will be translated by the Spirit once again. 
into different places. Peter was in a trance, but he was still there on the ground where he was. But to be translated, that's a different story. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Here we go. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's take a double anointing. Because Elisha, you saw the mantle falling and that's why you have it. Receive that double portion. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Anointing. In the name of Jesus. Oil of joy. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. May the Lord bring you into manifestation. May the Lord bring you into the joy of the Lord. May He just strengthen you and encourage you and lift you up. When He is in your life, He is all you need. And let me promise you something. I promise you. I promise you in Jesus' name. That when you have fellowship with the Holy Spirit and you put your relationship with God first, He will take care of you. He will take care of your needs. The things and the problems and the issues and the burdens and the yokes will be destroyed I am living proof. I'm a, my life is a testimony that when you put God first and you seek Him above all else and in spite of everything that's going wrong in your life, and whatever it looks like, when you go into, He is going to take care of you. He's going to bless you. He's going to provide for you. He's going to heal you. You have, you have, and your life is not your own. It's in His hands. Nobody can pluck you from His hands. Nobody. You have that confidence and that assurance. So bless you guys. Thank you very much. Please share this word. It's not a word for everybody, I admit. But there's a reason that you were listening to this. God spoke to all of us tonight. So bless you and thank you very much. Amen and amen.